Hi, it's Dr. Clark. This is the first in a number of tutorials using Microsoft Word. Um, we're using the current version of Word, which is 2010, um, with all the current Microsoft updates applied to it. Um, the purpose of this tutorial is to look at the use of headings, heading numbering, and table of contents to create a scientific document. Um, we're assuming that uh, you're going to be using a standard scientific uh, document format, uh, the kind of format we use for writing reports, thesis, um, templates and things like that. Um, we're going to be using headings, so heading 1 as a chapter for instance, heading 2 as a subheading for a chapter, and then heading 3 as a subheading to a subheading. Uh, and we're also going to assume that you'll be using a standard numbering format so that chapter numbers will be labelled 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then subheadings will be 1 or 2 or 3 with a decimal after it, followed by the number of the subheading. So, for instance, the first subheading in chapter 2 will be 2.1, and then that will be followed by sub subheadings, which will be 2.1.1, 2.1.2, etc. Um, we're going to be uh, then creating a table of contents which will update automatically or update when you click on ask it to update as you create your document and we're going to be adding some uh, text into the document and then in latter tutorials we'll be coming back and putting in some figures and sorting out some numbering and some referencing for figures and sections so we're going to start by just setting up our headings and setting up our heading numbering as I said we're using the standard version of Word um, with a standard template. This is the template that opens when you open Word. And this is a normal document on the screen here. Um, you'll notice uh, in the Home tab at the top and the right here you've got a series of um, options for various styles. These are the style palettes and Word by default gives you normal, no spacing, heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, heading 4, etc and there's another whole page of this with all various bits and bobs in it. Um, the ones we're concentrating on this tutorial are Normal, Heading 1, Heading 2 and Heading 3. Um, so I'm just going to start by um, starting off by writing my first heading number and this will be Chapter 1. So we're starting our little book. Um, I've prepared in my paste buffer the standard lorem ipsum text. So there we are, there's our standard lorem ipsum text, full of spelling mistakes you can see because it's all in Latin. And after that I'm going to put in chapter 2 followed by the same text and then within chapter 2 I'm going to do um, section 1 within chapter 2 put some more text in and in chapter 1 section 1 and section 2 I'm going to put in so you can see I'm just basically populating the various parts of this um, and I'm going to do a subsection and then so now I've got a here we are, I've got some text, I've got chapters, I've got a couple of sections with a subsection and another chapter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to format these basic texts in the format that I want my final chapters to look, uh, my final report to look like. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to decide everything's going to be in Times New Roman rather than Calibri which is the default just to give us a bit more editing options. So first and foremost let's start with our chapter numbering we highlight our first chapter, we'll just click on our first chapter and we call it Heading 1. So immediately it's formatted this chapter in the format that Word wants Heading 1 to be. It's kind of a blue colour, so I'm going to highlight this, make it black to start with, and then choose Times New Roman. I'm happy with uh, point 0.14, although I'm tempted to make it point 0.16, 16 point font, just to give it a little bit more uh, impact. Uh, and I'm also going to give it a little bit of space after you can see this paragraph is uh, kind of bunched up with the text below and because this is a chapter I'm going to go to the paragraph here and add a little bit of space and 12 points of space and you can see now it's spread out a little bit more. Um, I'm quite happy with that so if I select chapter 1 and then go over to the style menu and instead of left clicking I right click I can then choose update heading 1 to match selection and now you can see heading 1 has changed, the text here has changed to this black text. So I can now go down to chapter 2 and I can call that, there we are, heading 1, so that's now chapter 2. So let's do section number 1, again click on section 1 and we're going to call this heading number 2 and again Word has formatted it in a blue colour in Cambria font, so I'm going to select that, change it to Times New Roman, make it black and again I'm going to put a little bit of space after it not as much in the chapter and I'm fairly happy with that so I'm going to right click now and update heading to match selection and now heading 2 is set to black so I can go to section 2 
assign that and then section 1 of chapter 2 assign that so now we've got all our wrong one, there we are, then I've got all my headings and titles set up quite nicely there and the last one is my subsection so I click on the subsection and choose heading 3 and again it's done it in blue and in bold and Cambria so I change that to Times New Roman in black I think I'll leave it bold but I'll leave it at size 11 I think uh, that's size 13 uh, and that is size 16 so I quite like the, the layout they've given me there um, so now I've, I'm happy with subsection I'm going to update it here as well there we are updated and then I need to look at my text because I'm using Times New Roman for everything else but my body text is in Calibri and that's the normal paragraph format so I might as well just to select one of these paragraphs change this to Times New Roman um, it's set to Times New Roman 11 I'm not going to argue with Word in this case I'd probably leave it at size 12 but just for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to leave it at size 11 um, right click on my normal here and go update and now you can see automatically all my other paragraphs are updated. I could change my mind at a later date and change that to 12 and then of course all my other normal paragraphs will update to size 12 as well so there's no real worries about this. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that it's often uh, normal in scientific reports and thesis and other such things to uh, number each of your chapters and number each of your sections. Will Word has thought about this and there is a drop down box that does it all automatically for you so you don't need to type in one space 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 etc um, you can just go up to this drop down box up here and you can choose an option from this second section so at the moment you can choose list library I think this one here is a standard scientific um, format you can see 1, 1 1.1, 1.1.1 1 .1. so click on that and lo and behold now your chapter and your section numbers are all nicely numbered all the way through and you can see it carries on as it should do 1 is chapter 1, 1.1 1 .1 is section 1, 1 1.2 and then you've got 1.2.1 as a subsection which is great and if I wanted to add another subsection under here I could just type subsection 2 go to heading 3 and there we are there's subsection 2 with our lipsum uh, lorem ipsum text underneath it so that's all looking like a thesis right now it's looking quite good um, you've noticed I've not changed the uh, the justification on these texts I've left it just left justif justified that's absolutely fine for the moment so I'm just going to save that so we know where we're at um, save it as chapter one and now I'm going to insert my table of contents so um, To insert a table of contents, you can go to the References tab and you can just click on Table of Contents. And there are options for you here. You can do an automatic table of contents. Uh, they've got number one and number two as predefined uh, table of contents. But you can also insert a manual table of contents. Of course, this would defeat the object of doing it all automatically, which we're trying to uh, do in this situation. So I'm going to choose the one on the bottom here and actually design it myself. So click on Insert Table of Contents. And now you can see here we've got Heading 1, Heading 2, and Heading 3. Uh, as a preview, it looks fairly, um, fairly horrible, frankly. So we're going to have a little look at that. Uh, we're going to modify it. And then we're going to have a look at each of these bits in turn. So Table of Contents 1 is my chapter titles. And I'd like to have them quite big and bold because I want to draw the eye to them. So I'm going to click on the Modify button. And I'm going to choose them to be Times New Roman 14 and I'm going to make sure they're bold and um, they're left justified and that's all great I'm going to click on the format and just go to tabs and make sure that yeah the second tab which is 15.9 centimeters is a right aligned tab with the numbers so that's leave that as it is um, press OK table of contents number two which is our subheading or our sub chapter we can click on that and go to modify I'm going to leave this at 12 point times New Roman again go to the tabs menu and just check that the second tab the 15.9 is automatically right and with dots which is fine and then the third table of contents 3 I'm going to modify that have a little look times New Roman 11 well let's uh, make that 12 um, actually no let's leave it 11 uh, leave it as it is format the tabs make sure they're all set up right brilliant um, everything else we can change in the text because if you go to the modify button you'll notice here that automatically update is set on for each of these table of contents sections which means if you change anything 
in the document, it'll automatically update the formatting for all of the TOC3s, the Table of Contents Level 3s, which is great. So you press OK, press OK, and press OK for the last time. And there we have our Table of Contents. You can see that the uh, tabs are a bit off for subsection uh, formatting paragraphs, so I can just highlight on one of those, and I can just drag those in so that my subsections are set up the way I want them to be set up. Uh, put that one there. That looks nice. And you can see also there seems to be a little gap underneath this, so I can go back to Home, choose Paragraph, and you can see it's got five points, so let's turn that off. And there we are. So there's our table of contents, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, with all the subsections. That looks fairly nice. Um, so I can change this now to Introduction, and I may want to change Chapter 2 to my materials and methods. And although I've changed these, of course, my table of contents hasn't changed at all. So if I click on it and then right click and choose Update Field, you can see now it's automatically updated the introduction and the materials and methods. And you can see I've only got two sections, so I can label this subsection background, for instance, label this subsection. Um, my hypothesis. Uh, this can be aims. And this can be my methodology used. For instance, materials and methods. I can call this method one. So I've renamed a few of the paragraphs. And let's say I've put new text in. I can right-click here, choose update, and you can see Im immediately it's updated my uh, table of contents to fit and the table numbers are all correct and everything looks brilliant. Um, materials and methods introduction I want to make them stick out a bit more so for this purpose of this I'm just going to click on paragraph and add a little bit of space beforehand. There we are, so that stands out a little bit more. So you can see now it's very very quick and easy. Um, if for instance I want to start the introduction on a new page I can either go insert page break and there we are that starts on a new page and materials and methods click there insert page break and now the introduction starts on a new page and the methods start on a new page so I can right click here update and I can update the entire table and you can see immediately now it's updated all our page numbers um, I can format my table of contents so it looks nice and big and bold uh, and that's the simple way of setting up a template uh, now of course you can just fill in the blanks keep adding text remembering that when you add a subheading to choose heading 2 and when you choose a sub sub or a um, extra heading you can choose heading 3. If you want to extend to heading 4 you need to go back to your table of contents and redesign it and add another subheading um, but to be honest things get a little bit complicated when you end up with section 1.1.1.1 so it's quite easy to format a document to only contain um, three levels so 1, 1.1 and 1.1.1 so I hope that helps that's a, a quick easy way of setting up templates um, we're going to stop this now and the next tutorial will be on inserting figures and captions.